Well, this is Leopold, and I have been uh, commentating from time to time to let everyone know on When the Ancients Speak and other platforms uh, that I have had my uh, speech uh, channeled. And that is because it is here for me to say that the great court is arriving very soon, and Father and the other great female powers that you would call little G's are out there doing father's bidding. Now, if you don't believe this, even though you've seen the evidence that uh, Eridil has provided pictures of the sun, and if you were to take five damn minutes and take a look and see for yourself, and then also see the Schumann, perhaps at this time you might be able to conclude that you're an idiot if you don't believe something is going on at this point. I don't believe that includes these people here, Eric Deal. No. Actually, I think the people that listen to us have really gained the amount of wisdom. Because you see the Yes, difference. horrendous is an interesting choice of, of verbiage. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean horrendous. No, but it's about. actually, you're right that the, the knowledge is horrendous. Because when you look about and you see all the idiots on your planet, uh, I, Leopold, as once a great leader myself, understand the importance of saying, my goodness, you're all a bunch of doofuses. You are Wake Leopold. up! 
I am Leopold, yes. Really? No, not the Leopold of your world. Oh. But I have a similar name. No, not everybody was a famous so-and-so on Terra. Terra sucks, let me tell you. Uh -huh. Your world is a bit horrible. Uh -huh. It's been marked as a void in travel. You know, like whenever you like want to travel overseas on your planet, and they say don't go to this place or that place, because you might get robbed. Yeah, really. Well, we never come here. Oh, this place is horrible. Used to come here all the time, though. Well, now I'm on the fourth dimension after I passed. And uh, I find that I'm quite content there, especially traveling to and fro. There are many different portals that allow for travel to other outlying places in the fourth and fifth dimension that we enjoy so much. Oh, I've recently, I'm about to take a trip to this wonderful planet called Fomoria. Oh, yeah. Wink, wink. Yes. And uh, I'm here to tell you, my dear, oh, everyone's a buzz about the wedding and things. Yes. But that's a different story. We'll talk about that perhaps another time. I was told I can't mention certain things because it's not time for those certain things to be mentioned, apparently. So I'll keep my trap shut and try to pass on what I can, which was this. Father's court has arrived. If you haven't seen this, then you are just doing backflips like a monkey, okay? You don't understand what Father's about to do on this planet, but it's going to be very interesting because the whole term court came from Father when he maintained his royal court. And of course, everything's a mockery on Terra about Father's court, so you have all of these crazed individuals hopping about to and fro, doing terrible things to the Terrans, I've heard. Yes, I was a Chamberlain once, too, so I find all this information fascinating, especially since I'll probably have to be one of the few that'll be here to help interpret things as things need to be interpreted. Yeah. Uh, Father's court is here. He's about to hold court on Terra. Yeah. Think about that, you guys. He's about to go into court on Terra with the beings that are here still Father asked them to get done and still have not been done. What are you doing? I'm just playing with the coconut jar. I just want to thing. The voice recorder. Oh no, it's going to record my voice? I don't like that hey. in the morning, I told hey. you. Uh, hey, <laughs> They're going to tie me down in the chair again. I can't get out. Simon. Let me out. Simon. Okay, the Christ, Simon. Come oh, on, no one's tying you down. I'm telling you, sometimes we go through these things. It's like dealing with some uh, challenged something. individuals, right? You know, yeah. or someone that has partial dementia. Yeah, that's what it's like, people. A lot of these spirits are damaged. And the fourth dimension is where a lot of damaged spirits are, mm -hmm. okay? But like I said, what we're doing in Homeland is trying to re rebuild spirits. That's kind of what we do, but they get to live in a world that's comfortable for them. Imagine if you could it, create your own world. And in essence, Father will have you do this at some point, that your thoughts will become used in Father's creations. And we're not saying that you're just sitting around creating some of this. There are other people creating stuff, too. So Father takes a little bit of this and that. So uh, when a certain planet or place or location or dimension comes into being, that is a form of matrix in and of itself. And that's kind of, I think, what Leopold was trying to let everyone know, that there are kings and queens of these matrices. And I know they try and tell you there aren't, but there are. There are. Many are governing artificial intelligences that help the whole system run, okay? You are literally living in the matrix, okay? It's just instead of it being, you know, Neo and everything else, your matrix is Terra, which in, inside of that matrix, Terra is real. The beings are real. You're real souls, and you're experiencing these things, and it all counts towards Father's great clickometer. Every time you do something he likes, you get another click. Father's, he rewards you for this stuff. He makes sure all the matrices will reward you. That's what's being fixed right now. Yeah. So, And I know it's taking longer than we thought. 
Because, look, we don't know everything, even though we're spirits on the fourth dimension, okay? And that's another uh, fallacy that you've been told, is that spirits are all great, wise, and brilliant. Well, yes, we do see more, and I explained the theory of what it's like to be walking on the ground or, or maybe, you know, a drone 50 feet in the air. You can see more with the drone around you than you could if you were on the street, and that's the difference that higher dimensional beings have over you. They can look back down at what used to be them and what they used to be, and we can see now the actual flaws in the matrix and everything. So yes, we do have that advantage, but that doesn't mean we know everything. And there's a lot of coding that's above our heads, let me tell you. And that a lot of it belongs to Father, but some of it belongs to the darker beings who have perfected taking over matrices and, you know, and, and dominating these matrices. Uh, the, the movie Tron comes to mind. If you can recall the movie Tron, where there were these programmers and they created this world and the interaction of other computers and places created living sentience, part of an extension of artificial intelligence that would allow for the creation the same way that Father does, because Father simply echoes these things at lower levels. I, I don't know if you can follow that, but I hope you could, because it's very prudent information that all of you need to know. Stephen A. Jones once again knocks it out of the park. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there are some in this game, in this matrix, that never want you to understand how it works. Because once you know how Or it that works, you're even in a matrix. They yeah. want you to believe that this is the only reality. Yeah. But once you understand what this world is, and how you've been diverted from the original plan, uh, you can see by just people who have just enough intelligence to do a daily function, but that's all they wanted. That's all they ever wanted for all of us, was you just functioned at a certain level. They wanted to turn your creative abilities into continuance of their matrix, and they have been experts at this, where they have given us the things that we think that we want. Good paying jobs, money, all this stuff, because we've been brought up in this matrix. Yeah. There, there are aliens out there that have no concept of what money is. They get confused when they hear about it, and they don't understand it. They don't even understand some of these aliens in need to exchange for anything, because they are already so highly developed that their bodies produce everything they need, and they simply expose themselves to plasma or sun or energy. And that is how they stay connected and feed. And they do whatever they want. Yeah. Father wants you to have the freedom to go anywhere in this multiverse. Anywhere in any other of the matrices. Because everything is an echo of another echo of another echo of another echo of and another the universe, echo. The universe is changing. Whether you're going to accept that or not is entirely up to you. But the universe is changing in a sense that we are going back to a time that Father preferred, a time when things worked the best on Terra. And that may not work for you at this point. Father has decided that that's how it's going to be. Father is unifying the infinity windows. You know, whenever you see someone on a computer screen and they click on some recording software and all of a sudden you get a duplicate of your screen that goes down and down and down and down all the way to, you, to infinitum. Yeah. Father is aligning all of these together so that we all now flow on one timeline so that a simple echo will reverberate across all the different matrices. Imagine each one of those little windows as a matrices. And what's going on right now are these beings who are now under subject to Father's authority themselves, the ones that promised you all the stuff that you still haven't seen. Those beings now are trying to gather their souls. Have you noticed how many louche fests recently? Yeah. Yeah. So what is going on is that the louching is... Um, well, see, Father, they still love me. I still control these things. How come I can't have what I need to? Do you see what's going on here? This is a challenge. Because 
They were told to get this done a long time ago, and they didn't. And they've been messing around, and they've been waiting for the idiots to die off. But then when they have control of the other ones, the, the ones that still believe mostly in this system, they can maintain them at a level where they can challenge Father and say, but I have five, six million souls around me. You can't come after me. They all agree with me. Do you see how this And that has works? value with Father. Yes. That has if, if you can surround yourself with, say, a million souls and say, but Father, we all think this. Father is a creator God. And he responds to creators. And he, he'll look at them and say, you know what? You now have the right to exist because of this. Let's see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And Father will do that. That's what's going on. That's why a lot of people don't get, well, why is everyone trying to be evil? It's not that they're necessarily all trying to be evil. They may already be evil, and they're just trying to figure out a way to survive. Yeah, that's and, what's going on. And if you get enough souls following you, okay, then that has value to Father, and Father will allow them to then manipulate him in certain ways to allow a reality that they want to create that may exist as a subset attached to the original reality. So they can actually suck you into their reality and close the door. Okay, I think that's about all I want to say today. And uh, yeah, I mean, as long as everyone realizes that what's going on now is just... Father, he's got this, okay? Anyone that thinks that our divine creator, the most amazing of all beings that could exist could not and would not be able to control one small planet. Well, we know what Athena thinks now, I guess. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, I'll talk to you later.